What's going on, family? This is Scrap of Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistical Series. I want to quickly go through a fight that took place between Roland Estrada from the Bronx, New York, and Rocky Marciano, the Brockton blockbuster. Marciano, at that time, was the heavyweight champion of the world. He defeated Jersey Joe Walker in 1952 and knocked him out in the 13th round with an unbelievable right hand that turned Jersey Joe Walker upside down and became the brand new heavyweight champion of the world. Now, Roland Estrada was born May 12th, 1927, in the Bronx, New York. He died July 30th, 2009. He was 89 years of age at the time of his death. Now, he would die in the Bronx, New York, but he resided in Port Orange, Florida. He stood six foot. He was a heavyweight. He had total bouts of 66 fights, 57 wins, 27 knockouts, 9 losses, and he would stop himself two separate occasions, courtesy of Rocky Marciano. As for Rocky Marciano, he was born September 1st, 1923 in Boston, Massachusetts. He died August 31st, 1969. He was 45 years of age at the time of his death. Boston, Massachusetts. He stood 5 foot 10 inches and he had a 68 inch reach. He had a fighting record of 49 and 0 with 43 knockouts and 6 decisions. He boxed 241 rounds. He began his professional debut October 10th, 1949. Now, these two men would meet March 3rd, 1950. And at that time, Roland Strauss had a final career record of 37-0. and 0. They fought at Madison Square Garden. I'm going to show you some post-fight uh, pictures of that fight. Let's take a look at some stats here. Roland Strauss was 26 years of age. Marciano was 29. Estrada weighed 190. He had a 72 inch reach. He stood 5 foot 11. Marciano weighed 186. He had a 67 inch reach. He stood 5 foot 11. So these men were somewhat even in terms of physical skills. As you can see here, Roland Estrada covering up from a Marciano attack. And this would no way help Roland Estrada out of this jam because Marciano is in perfect position. Beautiful uppercut is going to be thrown. Estrada was in no position to defend against it. And there's a couple of things he can do, but if you look at the position of his feet, Roland Estrada is a sitting duck. Absolutely nothing he can do to defend against it. He can't even pull Marciano in. He can't properly cover up. In fact, there were only three strands back then he can be pushed out of the ring. So Marciano could basically have his way in his fight. As you can see here, the knockout story. Roland Estrada once again covers up under the Marciano attack. Now, there's a lot of things that Roland Estrada can do in this situation. But I always say pressure burst pipes. And because of the relentless attack, the punching power, the grit, the balance of Rocky Marciano, Roland Estrada can't do anything to Rocky Marciano. Marciano has his way. As you can see here against the ropes, Marciano, once again, he has Roland Estrada on a defensive because he applied pressure from the opening bell. And you can see here Roland Estrada. As I was telling you before, it's only three strands, and he can easily go through the ropes, and that he did. And he struggles to get back into the ring. Now he's not hurt. He's basically frustrated mentally. Because he knows there's nothing he can do with Marciano. So he's making a decision if he should even get back into the ring. Estrada is standing too high over Marciano. He's too tall. He needs to get down with Marciano. This is the Marciano and Roland Estrada fight. And, um... He's just not... It's a long matchup. Completely inexperienced against a fighter like Marciano that applies that much pressure. 
Marciano was an unbelievable punching machine. He would never stop throwing punches, never stop coming to you. And you had to have a certain amount of athleticism. You had to have the ability to jab, uppercut, and hook, and turn on Marciano. If you didn't have those skills, he would run over you. And this is what happened with the majority of his opponents. Roland Estrada just looks upside down, just wondering when this will be over. You see Marciano engaging Roland Estrada. Once again, covering up on the ropes. Now the question is, why would Roland Estrada jab when Marciano's in this position? And that's the problem. He didn't know what to do with Marciano. Because Marciano's in no position to do anything back to him. But he will after that jab is complete. And if you look at the glove on Roland Estrada, he pushed the punch out. It's not even a jab. He poured with the jab. So it does nothing to Marciano. Rocky Marciano and Roland Estrada. March 3rd, 1950. I just wanted to share that fight with you. Amazing night at the Polo Grounds. Now, Roman Mastroza and Rocky Marciano will share two opponents, Tiger Ted Laurie. And Tiger Ted Laurie was some fighter. He was at the end of his career when he met these men. And Laurie said later on, in my prime, I could have defeated both of them. Mastroza was in there with King Simmons in 1950. Caesar Brion, 1949. He was in there with Rex Lane in 1953, another Rocky Marciano opponent. Charlie Norcus. Charlie Norcus was some fighter. He had a war with Danny Nardico, one of the greatest fights of all times, in my opinion. Julio, Julio Mendolis, another good fighter. Marciano was in there with Phil Moscato. King Simmons. Freddie Bishop, Harry Kid Matthews, Jersey Joe Walcott twice as a Charles Twice and Joe Lewis. So thanks for hanging in with me. Scrapbook Boxing Museum and Forgotten Fist of Series. Thinking all great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. Salute to my subscribers. Who's these very good fighters?